meet Keaton Newgren. He's a law student from Johnstown who previously interned for Senator Joni Ernst. Oh, Keaton. Very good. Hi, Mr. Vice President. My question is, are you prepared to push back against the former president on allegations you could have overturned the 2020 election? Well, Keaton, I, I would refer you to my speech today <laughs> to answer that question. And the answer is yes. And I think it's, it's important. But not that I, I didn't think there were irregularities in the 2020 election. I did. And I said so on that fateful day. I, I had concerns that there were half a dozen states that had changed the rules in the name of COVID and that it undermined public confidence uh, in our elections. But once states had certified those elections, once the courts had reviewed them, once the Congress had considered any objections, I, I knew my duty was clear. The Constitution states clearly that the job of the vice president as president of the Senate is to preside over a joint session of Congress where the electoral college votes are opened and counted. It says they shall be opened and they shall be counted. And we did that. And I want the American people to know that uh, I, I believe with all my heart that we did our duty that day. The Bible says he keeps his oath even when it hurts, and I know something about that. Donald Trump says he is, quote, inclined to pardon many members of the mob who attacked the Capitol on January 6th. Those people were, of course, part of the same mob who built gallows and chanted about wanting to hang you. Would you consider pardoning, pardoning any of them? You know, on the day of January 6th, I issued a tweet demanding that people leave the Capitol and end the violence. And I said that those that failed to do that should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And I continue to believe that today. We cannot ever allow what happened on January 6th to happen again in the heart of our democracy. And I'll stand by the decisions and the due process of court in our laws. And uh, I, I have no interest or no intention of pardoning those that, that assaulted police officers or vandalized our capital. They need to be answerable to the law. Sir, I want to ask about some breaking news. Tonight, the Justice Department recently informed Donald Trump's legal team that he is a target of a federal investigation into possibly mishandling classified documents. I should say you were cleared last week uh, in your own documents case. What's your reaction to the news about your former boss? Well, let me say that the handling of classified materials is a very serious matter. And that was why after the revelations uh, at the president's residence and the revelations at the former president's residence, I, I took it upon myself to review our files. And uh, uh, we uncovered a, a small number of documents that had been inadvertently transferred to our residence in Indiana. I immediately informed the Department of Justice and uh, uh, I, I'm grateful after our full cooperation that they concluded that it was an innocent full mistake. Full cooperation. Do you see his case as different? But let me say this. I, look, I, I, I don't know the facts of the president's case. Um, I, I don't know the facts of the former president's case. Um, and, um, but what we've got to have in this country is equal treatment under the law. Um, and uh, Dana, you may not know that. I mean, I, I was very troubled last summer when, when for the first time in history, there was a search warrant executed at the home of a former president of the United States. Surely, you know all the years I served on the Judiciary Committee. That's when you and I first met. I, there had to be dozens of ways that could have been handled other than that kind of behavior. I mean, when I informed the Department of Justice that we had classified materials potentially in our home, they were at my home. The FBI was on my front doorstep the next day. But isn't and what the we found out was that when Joe Biden apparently alerted the Department of Justice, 80 days later, but sir, they showed up at his office. That's not equal treatment sir, under I, the law. Sir, and I we've understand, got to end I understand you're talking about equal judge. treatment. But the question is allegation that an investigation into obstruction, which you clearly did not do, if that is uh, something that investigators see mm -hmm. as possible, even enough potentially to indict the former president, uh, do you think that that should go forward? Well, I would, I would hope not. I, I really would, Dana. I mean, 
There's several reasons for that. Number one is I think it, I think it would be terribly divisive to the country. I mean, at a time when the American people are hurting, I mean to tell you, families are struggling right now with record inflation. We have a, we have a crisis at our border, the likes of which we've never seen. We have a flood of fentanyl coming into every city, large and small in this country, that's killing young people every day. We have threats abroad, a crime wave in our cities. I, I think now more than ever, we ought to be finding ways we could actually come and together. Sir, I, we're going to get and to this all kind of, of this kind of action by the Department of Justice, I think, would only fuel uh, further division in the country. And let me also say, I think it would also send a terrible message to the wider world. I mean, we're the we're the emblem of democracy. We're the symbol of justice in the world, and the the, the serious matter, which has already happened once in New York. I'm indicting a former president of the United States sends a terrible message to the world. I hope the DOJ thinks better of it and resolves these issues without an indictment. Sir, I just want to clarify what you're saying is that if they believe he committed a crime, they should not go forward with an indictment. You just talked before about no, look, committing to the rule of law. Let me be clear that no one's above the law. Okay. But with regard to the unique circumstances here, in, look, I, I, those classified, I had no business having classified documents in my residence, and I took full responsibility for it. President Biden had no business having them in his residence from when he was vice president as well. And the same with former President Trump. But I, I would just hope that uh, there would be a way for them to move forward without the dramatic and drastic and divisive step of indicting a former president of the United States. We've got to find a way to move our country forward and, and restore confidence in equal treatment under the law in this country. We really do. Sir, if Donald Trump, if Donald Trump is convicted of a crime and you're elected president, would you pardon him? Well, I, I don't want to speak about hypotheticals. I'm not sure I'm going to be elected president of the United States. <laughs> but I believe we have a fighting chance. I really believe we do. Another thing that you said in your announcement today, you said, quote, anyone who puts themselves over the Constitution should never be president of the United States, clearly referring to former President Trump. An hour later, you pledged to support the eventual Republican nominee. So if you think that Donald Trump should never be president, how could you commit to supporting him if he is the nominee? Well, let me say what I said today was that anyone who puts themselves above the Constitution should never be president in the first place. And anyone who asks anyone else to put them over the Constitution should never be president again. I had hoped that President Trump would come around on our difference about that tragic day and about my role. And I still hope he does. I mean, we'll have differences that are worthy of debate, but at its very core, it's important to remember, the President of the United States takes an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and faithfully execute the laws. But at the core of that is a willingness to submit to the collective wisdom of generations of Americans enshrined in the Constitution of the United States. And I hold the view that it should be a prerequisite of any man or woman that would ever hold the office of president that you would agree to never put yourself above the Constitution. With regard to supporting the Republican nominee, look, I, I started in politics as a Democrat. But as soon as I heard the voice and ideals of the 40th president of the United States, I joined the Reagan revolution and never looked back. And I've always supported the Republican nominee for president of the United States. And I'll support the Republican nominee in 2024, especially if it's me. Well, 